Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you about the derivatives of exponentials and logarithmic functions. Okay, so uh, before we get started with the derivatives of exponentials and logs, let's just review a few things that we uh, already know. And the first one is if f of x is equal to e to the x, then f prime of x is equal to e to the x. Okay, that's one of the, it's a very special property, it's a very special function. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Okay, also, uh, what we also know is that if we have f of x is equal to e to some function of x, uh, can we take the derivative of this guy? And the answer is, uh, yeah, we can. So if we, I'm sorry, I shouldn't use f of x here. Let's use something else. Let's use g of x, since I already used f of x right here. So if I have f of x equals e to some function, then the derivative, f prime of x, is equal to, well, any time that I have e to a power, then the derivative will start e to the power. I just rewrite it again. So it's e to the g of x. That's how it will always start, just rewrite it. But then I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function by the chain rule, which is g of x. So I need to multiply by g of x's derivative and get g prime of x. So if I have a e to some function, then the derivative is e to that function times the derivative of that function. All right, so we know the derivative of e to the x. We know the derivative of e to any function of x. So now what we can do is we can look a little bit at what about if I wanted to take the derivative of the natural log? Okay, so what if we had that y is equal to uh, the natural log ln of x? Now, you should know that the natural log and e, a natural log of x and e to the x, those are inverse functions of each other. Okay, and what that means is that if I plug one of them into the other for x, I just output the function x, uh, or the identity function. So what I want to do is, on this guy, what if I took e to the power of both sides of the equation? In other words, if these two things are the exact same thing, then e to the y must be the same as e to the ln of x. But of course, these are inverse functions of each other, e and ln of x. So this is just equal to x. All right, so I get, let me just rewrite it. I get e to the y equals x. And now what I want to do, maybe if I don't know what the derivative of ln of x is, a way that I can figure out the derivative of ln of x is by using implicit differentiation on this equation. So let's do it. The derivative of e to the y, I just said that if I have e to a function of x, then I just rewrite what I have. So I have e to the y times the derivative of y, but that's dy dx. And on the other side of the equation, the derivative of x is 1. Now let's solve for dy dx. I get that dy over dx is equal to 1 over e to the y. But if we look back up here a little ways, e to the y is equal to x. So I can replace this e to the y with x, and I get 1 over x, or that dy over dx is equal to 1 over x. Okay, so if y equals the natural log of x, then dy dx equals 1 over x. And so this is the derivative of ln of x. So the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. Okay, now uh, remembering that, let's do something new. <coughs> what if I have the natural log of some function of x? 
All right. So this requires me to use the chain rule. Okay. So I've got y equals the natural log of something. Well, what I said over here is when I have y equals ln of x, the derivative is 1 over x. So the derivative of a natural log starts out, so I get dy dx, I get 1 over whatever's inside the natural log. In this case, that's f of x. Then I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. So I multiply by f prime of x. In other words, dy over dx is equal to f prime of x over f of x. This is true for the natural log of anything. So any time that I have natural log of a function, and this could be a bunch of x stuff, then the way I take the derivative of ln of something is the derivative of that thing divided by that thing. So if I have ln of any function, the derivative is take the derivative, put it on top, take the function, put it on the bottom. That's how I get derivative of ln of f of x. All right, a couple more things. What if the base of the exponential or the base of the logarithm is not e? So in both of these cases, the base of my exponential has been the number e. The base of the logarithm has been the number e. What if I get something else? Like what if I have, say, y equals some other number. I'll just call it b. It could be 3. It could be 7. It could be 10. But I have some other base for the exponential. Then what do I do? Well, it's all a matter of rewriting things. Um, b to the x could be written this way, and this is quite clever, actually, that it's e to the ln of b to the x. Remember that e and ln are inverse functions of each other. So e to the ln of something is just that thing. All right? So e to the ln of b to the x is just b to the x. So this is just a new way of writing it. OK, but one thing I can do, because this is ln of b to a power, by the power rule for natural log, I can move the x out in front. So I could write this as e uh, as y equals e to the x ln b. Now, this is a form where I feel comfortable taking the derivative. So let's do it. The derivative of y is dy dx. And on the other side, the derivative of e to a power, remember we did this before, how do I take the derivative of e to a power, is I rewrite, so I get e to the x ln b times the derivative of the function. Well, x is just x to the first, ln of b, that's just some constant. b is just a number, ln of b is just a number, so I have a number times x. What's the derivative of a number times x? Just the number. So I just multiply by ln of b. And so the derivative of e to the x ln b is e to the x ln b times ln b. That makes sense. But now let's rewrite it one more time. I get that dy over dx is equal to uh, e to the x ln b. Well, e to the x ln b was just another way of writing this. But this was just another way of writing this. So that's just b to the x times ln of b. In other words, the way that I take the derivative of a base other than e to the x is I rewrite it just like I would if I were doing e to the x. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The derivative of b to the x is b to the x, but I have to multiply by ln of b. <coughs> Notice that if this is e, then I have e to the x times ln of e, and ln of e is 1. So it still works out just great. OK, one more thing. <coughs> one more, and then we're done. OK, let me erase.
and we've got, let's look at what if y is equal to log base b of x. <clears throat> we have to remember a little algebra at this point and remember that y is equal to, well, ln of uh, log base b of x is the same thing as the natural log of x divided by the natural log of b. But this is, could be written as 1 over natural log of b times natural log of x. This guy's a constant. So if I'm taking the derivative of this function, the, the constant just stays. So I get 1 over ln of b. And then I just take the derivative of ln of x, and I know what the derivative of ln of x is. It's 1 over x. And so I get my derivative right here. So if I'm taking the derivative of a log that has a different base than e, then I do it just like I would before. It's 1 over x, but then I have to remember to multiply by 1 over natural log of whatever that different base is. Okay, now I think we're ready to try some example problems. <clears throat> 